In Jesus' name, Father Lord, we thank you once again. We bless your name that is highly lifted up. Father Lord, tonight we tarry again in your presence. Lord, as we tarry, we celebrate your grace. We honor you because you are the God that answers prayer. And unto you shall every vow be performed. Lord, the hour has come that we must give thanks unto the God that made the heaven and the earth, that make all the great things and all things that have hope in the world. Father Lord, that's why tonight we use opportunity to exalt and honor your name. Father, we have gathered together in your presence tonight to do only one thing, celebrate your glory, honor your word, and give thanks unto the God that made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything that lives there in earth. Father Lord, tonight is the tarry night. It's a night we gather together, not for any other purpose, for the purpose of praying for those who are working in the field of the Lord. Praying for the ministers that are ministering in the churches. Praying for the missionaries that are serving in the Lord's hierarchy. Praying for the saints that find themselves in the earth. Praying for those who are in prison, hoping for freedom. Praying for those who are in bondage, hoping that God should stretch his hand of mercy upon their life. Praying for the sick. For the healing mercy of the Lord, that God should send his word and heal them from their disease. Praying for those who are in bondage, that God should send the spirit of freedom into their midst. Because his word is here in us, they are amen. Father Lord, we thank you for this privilege tonight, to be counted worthy to stand in your presence, to pray for the saints that are in the earth. To be able to honor your name in the midst of that people. Father, as we tarry tonight, meet us at the point of our names. <coughs> Holy Spirit, we cannot pray as we're supposed to. That's why we ask you tonight, please help our infirmities. We go on in that cannot be uttered. We know when you go on, the Spirit of God testifies of us that we are the sons of God. Lord, if we are sons, therefore an heir, according to the covenant of promise. Father Lord, you told me that the just shall live by faith. Lord, tonight, as we believe, we let it be done even according to our word. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brethren, tonight we start by just short teaching and exhortation from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, from verse 4. He says, Surely, he had borne our grief and carried our soul. Yes, we did esteem him sticking, smitten of God and afflicted. Tonight, there is something we need to know for ourselves. That there is no need for us to carry our grief anymore. Somebody has taken it. And that man, whose name is Jesus, has borne our grief. Even though we do not esteem him with glory. Even though he was smitten and then cast, he took all our pains away. Tonight, God has good news for you. You no longer need to carry that pain by yourself. You no longer need to take the load of your problem by your, on your shoulder. Or take it along wherever you go. The Lord is taking it away tonight. The Lord whom we serve is here to take your body, to take your sorrow, to take your shame away. Oh, are you ashamed for one reason or the other? God is here to take it away. God is here to take your sorrows away. And he said he's the hope for the hopeless. He is the husband of the widow. He is the comfort of the comfortless. He is the father of the fatherless. He is the hope for the homeless. And he is with you tonight. If you will really come to him with all your heart tonight, and you shall bow your heart unto the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will take it from here. 
the Lord whom we serve, he is more than able. He is able, abundantly able, to deliver and to save. He is able, abundantly able, to deliver those who trust him. God is able. He is abundantly able to deliver and to save anyone that dare to trust in him. If you can dare to believe tonight, he is able. If you can dare to have confidence in his Lord, he is able. If you can dare to have confidence in his way, he is able. He is abundantly able to deliver. He is able to set you free. He is able to bring you out of whatever problem you find yourself tonight. He is more than able. Oh, our God is more than able. He is the creator of the universe. He is the one that makes my mouth. He can speak. He is the one that makes the hand. He can handle. He is the one that makes the eyes. He can see. He sees all your problem. And when Sarah chased her maid, Hagar away, when Hagar reached the desert and he was thirsty, and the Lord showed him a way, Hagar said, Yet have I have help from the Lord that seeth me. He is the Lord that sees. He is Jehovah. He is the Lord that sees you. He sees what you are going through. He knows how hard you have talked on behalf of his work. He knows how much you have left behind. Jesus said to the disciple, even when Peter was confused, when Jesus said for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, it shall be easier for a head of a camel to go through the eyes of a needle. Peter asked a question, Lord, what about us? We left it all for your sake. Shall we not be rewarded? Jesus looked at Peter and said, there is no one that left his father, mother, brother, sister, for my sake, that in this world we not have double. And in the world to come, he will have eternal life. Because you have left all for the sake of the work of God. Because you have left your home. You left the comfort of your bed. You left the comfort of your family. You left the peace that surrounds you at home. Children running after you. Only to put your life on danger daily. You die daily for the sake of the gospel. The Lord said you will be rewarded. You will be rewarded. And I said in this world you will have double. And in the world to come, the Lord will grant you a son of life. The Lord will grant you eternal life. The Lord will grant you eternal life. Oh, Masakayaraba. The Lord is the God of strength. He is the one that is able to do exceedingly above all you can think, ask, or even imagine. According to the authority that is at work in us. The God we serve is able to do all things. Lord Jehovah is able to do all things. He is able to make dry bones rise again. And I say tonight, every dry bones will rise again. Every dry bone will rise again. Every dead situation will come back to life. Everything in your life that has been hanged down, everything in your life that has been in bondage, the Lord will lose them tonight. The Lord will lose them tonight. The Lord will lose them tonight. The, your money that has been hidden somewhere in the coven and in your cortic world, and the devil says you will never have it. Your job that the enemy says it is impossible. It's over my dead body. That enemy will die tonight. And that job will be released. The Lord says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And whom I will, I will have compassion. The Lord is going to have compassion upon his people tonight. Today, I decree freedom for God's people. I decree healing for God's people. I decree deliverance for God's people. I decree peace for God's people. The Lord said, my peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth, giveth I also. I give and I have no sorrow to it. The Bible said that the blessing of the Lord I will touch repentance. The Bible says that his thoughts he has towards you are thought of good. They are not of evil 
to give you a hope and a future. There is future for God's people. There is a hope for God's people tonight. The Lord is in the midst of his house. Oh, the Bible says, let the earth be silent before him. There is none holy as our God. There is none that can deliver out of his hand. In Amos 3.3, 3, God tells us, in Amos 3, let's read the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. Amos 3.3. 3. The Lord says something in Amos 3.3. 3. He said two cannot work together except they agree. For you to be able to work with God tonight, you have to agree with him. You have to agree with God. And the Bible says wherever two or three are gathered together in agreement with the Lord, the Lord is right there with him or her. Whoever tonight you are, God is saying if two of you can gather together tonight, and agree together, touching anything in prayer, it will be done for you. It will be done for you. It will be done for you. There is power in unity. The Bible says how peaceful is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the, like the oil poured into the head of Aaron. It's the oil of anointing. It's the oil of anointing that was poured into the head of Aaron. That ran down towards his beard, down the color of the garment of his head. That is the place God combined his blessing. Oh, it's like the dew of the Lord upon my hammer. Oh, even life forevermore. That is where God combined blessings. If you dwell in unity, the blessing of the Lord will flow. Wherever you are in the feet today, I pray that God give you peace in the middle of sorrow. I pray that God give you peace in the middle of danger. I pray that God give you peace in the middle of restlessness. In the middle of an attack, I command the inner peace of the Holy Spirit that pass human understanding to possess your soul, to possess your mortal body, to possess your spirit, to possess your understanding. Father, let the peace of God, the Shekinah glory, let it come in the mighty power. Let it come in the mighty glory. Let it overshadow your people. As they desire to walk with you, Lord my God, none shall be lacking. None shall be weary in the faith. Lord, we tell you with agreement that we can walk with us, that you can walk with us. Oh, Lord my God, tonight we have come. We have come, we have come, because we have a date with you. Father Lord, this is the time we gather together, because in agreement we have accepted that because as we have given our life for your service, Lord, you will also give yourself for us. Father Lord, my God, we know we are not sent as sheep in the midst of ships. We are sent as sheep in the midst of war. Father Lord, you say we should be of good share, because you have overcome the world. You have overcome the world. And the victory that will overcome the world is through our faith in you. It's through our faith in you. Father, you say we should be aware of dogs. We should be aware of the Inquisition. We should be aware of dogs. Lord, there will be many dogs in the field. There will be many wolves out there waiting to divert us at the midpoint. The wolves are clothed in sheep clothing. They look like sheep. They left our food, but they are not part of us. Because I know you know your sheep. Your sheep hear your voice and they follow you. Father, Lord, my God, there are other sheep that are not part of this fold that we must go and bring them together so that there will be one fold and one sheep. Pen. Father, Lord, my God, we call upon you. Tonight, O oh Lord God of hosts, as many sheep, that are of this fold, that are not currently in the fold, give us the grace to bring them together. Give us the grace to go and gather those sheep and bring them into the sheep fold of the Lord, so that there will be one sheep fold and one sheep. Father Lord, we ask so Lord for your grace to be sufficient for us. We ask that your grace that is made perfect in weakness, we ask for the grace of God that pass human understanding to possess our mortal body tonight. Holy Spirit divine, Holy Spirit divine, the hour has come, the hour has come. Let your name, O Lord, be glorified. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified in the life of your saints. Let your name be glorified. 
in the life of the widows, let your name be glorified. In the life of the orphans, let your name be glorified. In the life of those in prison, let your name be glorified. In the life of the downcast, let your name be glorified. In the life of the confused, let your name be glorified. In the life of those who are hungry, looking for daily bread, let your name be glorified. Father, even in the life of those who think that all hope is gone, let your name be glorified. Even those who have given up in life and they think that all that life has to offer for them is torment, that they have come to the end of it. But Father, Lord, tonight there is light, there is hope, there is hope, there is hope for the oppressed, there is hope. Father Lord, you say we should you send me with your spirit to bind up the broken heart. Father Lord, tonight we bind up every broken heart. We bind up every broken heart. Even those who are thinking of giving it up, giving up defeat. Oh, we are tired. We have bear reproach in the name of the Lord enough. The time has come for us to depart from the feet and return home. Father Lord, tonight I say there is a crown, we can win it. There is a crown, we can win it. If we must go in Jesus' name, if we must go in Jesus' name, there is a crown awaiting us. There is a God whose dwelling is not with man. The God who is able to do exceedingly above what we can think, ask or even imagine that God is still with us today and is able to do all things, even to make dry bones in our life rise again. You may say within your heart or mind, my bones, are, my case is a forgotten issue. My bones are dried already. Oh, my grave are covered. But the Lord said, I should tell you that tonight there is hope. There is hope for the hopeless. That that grave that you think has been covered, that the Lord will tear your grave tonight. The Lord will tear your grave tonight. The Lord will cause you to arise again. The Lord will cause you, you that say your bones are dry, that there is no hope for you. The Lord said, I should tell you, tonight there will be snow covering you. There will be snow covering you. And the breath of light will come from the four corners of heaven. And they will enter into your, your slain. Oh, you slain, and you shall live again. Oh, you slain, the breath of life will enter into you tonight and you shall live again. It doesn't matter how dead that situation is. There is hope tonight. 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 The Lord said there is hope tonight. There is hope tonight. Father Lord, I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. I exalt you because I know you are a just and a faithful God. A blessed God and the Redeemer, the one who was and the one who is, and the one who is to come. From the ancient time, thou hast done it all. Father Lord, what has you not done? You have given us all things that our heart could wish. Father Lord, tonight, even you have given us the path of life. We give glory unto the Lord because he reigns. Because he reigns. I give glory to the Lord. He reigns, he reigns. I give glory to my God. He reigns. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. He's good to me. For the Lord, you are good to me. I give glory to your name because you reign. I give glory to your name because you reign. You reign in our life, you reign in our ministry, you reign in our vision. Even in our path of justice, you still reign. Father Lord, what shall we say therefore? If God be for us, who can be against us? This was the God that does not spare his son, but he gave him as an atonement to us. We know through him, he will give us all things, including all the benefit of life. There is no searching of his understanding. His ways are past finding out. Father Lord, tonight, we go again to Amos 3, verse 4. He said, Will a lion roar in the forest, and when he hath no prey, will a young lion cry out of his death, if he has not taken anything? The Lord says, 
in verse 6. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord has not done it? The Lord, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he will reveal his secret unto his servant, the prophet. Surely tonight, God said I should tell you, he's not going to do anything. But the secret will be revealed to his servant, the prophet. There is nothing hidden from us. Whatever is hidden belongs to God. Whatever he revealed belongs to us. If anything new show up on earth, God will reveal his servant, the prophet, tonight. Let's go to the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm, chapter 58. Psalm 58. He said, Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O you sons of men? Yea, in your hearts you walk wickedness. You wear violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, and they speak lies. Which will not happen to the voice of the charmer, charming so wisely. Brethren, today we want to pray for the missionaries in Africa. A lot of them are going through a diet situation. Their blood is being poured out into the missionary jungle of Africa every single day by a group who claim to be serving the same God, who want to help God to take vengeance, just like Jesus said, that the time will come that he who kill us will think he do God's favor. We are in such a time already. Today, we have people in Africa that are dying daily, not because they have committed crime, not because they have done any evil, but because they trust in God, because they have confidence in the God of their salvation. The persecution is increasing by the day. All they wanted is just a good life, good leaders. They wanted the life of peace, a life where they can gently go to church every Sunday and worship God, where they can humble themselves under the mighty arms of the Lord, so that in God's own time, God can exalt them. But Lord, they will not give them such time. They are being killed. They are counted as sheep for the slaughter. When they are accused, they do not accuse in return. Oh Lord my God, you are the Lord. I know the martyrs cry out in the book of Revelation, say, Lord, how long will thou avenge our death upon those that dwell upon the earth? But God is full of mercy and compassion, who will not always change. And he made clear in the book of Revelation that they should hold on until their fellow servant who will be slaughtered according to as they were, their number is complete. God hears prayers. He answers prayer. You may be thinking, after all my prayer, why has God not avenged our blood upon those that dwell there? God is waiting patiently for the number to be completed. And let me assure you, believers, who are afraid because of this to go into the nation, the Lord says, I should tell you that no man can touch the hair of your head except you have completed the work he sent you. And no man, no man can kill you if you have not finished the work he sent you. Even the birds of the air are number. The cattle of the thousand hills, they have number. God is the one that judge with equity and judgment. No hair of your hair will fall to the ground without the Father accounting for it. Father, you are a just and a faithful God. You are a blessed God and a redeemer. There is no one that can deliver from your hands. When you walk, none can hinder it. Tonight, we commit those missionaries in Nigeria and the Christian church that have been burnt down every day without provocation. 
Because no, our God does not need somebody to fight for him. He is able to fight for himself. He dispossesses the land of Canaan all by himself. He is the one that is able to take the inhabitants of the earth by himself. He is the one that can involve in a combat, take authority from kings, and rule over all nations. There is no one that can deliver from his hand. Our God is the God of strength. Judgment and peace abide with him. There is no searching of his understanding. Father, the hour has come that your name must be glorified. Your name must be glorified. Your name must be glorified in all the earth. Your name must be glorified in the church. Your name must be glorified in the ministry. In the mission, your name must be glorified. Father, I pray for the saints of yours who daily their blood is poured on the ground. Father Lord, I know even the bare blood of Abel cried out for vengeance, even from the ground, who opened his mouth to swallow up the blood. Father Lord, may this blood of this missionary not be in vain. May this blood bring the, about the deliverance of your people. May it be bring about the spread of gospel around the world. May this blood speak better things than the blood of Abel. May this blood begin to speak better things on behalf of the church. Lord, even when Abel was dead, his blood she spoke. Lord, the blood of this missionary will continue to speak. Even though they are dead, Lord, let their blood speak. Let it speak in every mission field. Let it speak in every vineyard. Let it speak in every area and affairs of the earth. That in everything, that the glory of this later house will be greater than the former. Lord Jesus, you say, when we lift you high, you will draw all men to yourself. Lord, begin to draw men today. People are increasing in hostility over Christians. Lord, even at this point, we still give glory to God. We know, oh Lord, the day has come that people who kill us think they are doing favor to God for killing us. But Lord, the hour has come that your name must be glorified. That you must prove to the inhabitant of the earth that there is no rock like my rock. There is no God elsewhere. There is no name given under heaven by which we might be saved other than the name of Jesus. Father, you promised me that in everything we should give thanks to you because this is your will concerning us in every time. So, I will just read something from Psalm 3. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all thy iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Who he redeemed. Who redeemeth my life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who certified thy mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like that of an eagle. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment. For all that are oppressed. He made known his way to Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and of plenteous in mercy. He will not always cheat, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquity. For the heaven is higher above the earth. So great as his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east from the west, so far has he removed transgression from us. Like as a father pity his children, so the Lord pity them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembered that we are dust. As for man, his day is as grass, as the flowers of the field. For the flower, for he, so he flourishes. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and it plays thereof, know it no more. 
But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children, children, to such that keep his covenant and to those that remember his commitment to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heaven and his kingdom ruled over all. This is the place I want to get to. The Lord has prepared his throne in heaven, his kingdom ruled over all. I don't care what people think they have control of the earth or what authority think they have they can do evil with impunity the bible make it clear to us he that live into captivity will himself go into captivity he that keep by sword by sword shall he be killed he that split the man blood by man shall his own blood be spilled these are laws that cannot change they are stamped on the doctrine of god it is not a cause, but it's a law that must come to pass. Be, you must be wise. If you have ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. If you lead into captivity, you yourself will go into captivity. If you share the man's blood by another man, your own blood will be shed. Brethren, the hour has come. That every man will reap what he sow. Lord, we pray for Africa. Sin and deprivation has led to the backwardness of my people. Lord, you did not create anybody backward. You did not raise one higher than the other. We allow idolatry. Idolatry breeds poverty. The reason why Africa is poor is not because of God forsake us. It's a place that is blessed by God. It is because of idolatry. Lord, we pray that that spirit of idolatry that stands in us. Other people are with sword and hammer. They want to fight on behalf of their God. Does God indeed need man to fight for them? Who will worship a God that needs human being to take vengeance on his behalf? Or that needs human being to do his defense. Did the father of Gideon not make it clear in the scripture? He said, when, the, when Gideon destroyed his idol and cut down the grove, the people say, bring your son, he must die. The father said, if anyone will fight for battle, if anyone will plead his cause, let him be put to death while he's still man. If Bar be God, can't he fight for himself? And that is the question God is asking you tonight. You that forget God. If your God is a God of power and strength as you claim he is, don't you think he has the power to fight for himself? Will you take up arms for him? Will you fight because of what you believe in? Why not let your belief fight on his own behalf? Why not let your God stand in the combat and take the earth because somebody has thrown down his altar? or discredit his name or cause an abomination to his pathway must you take vengeance to yourself why not leave vengeance to your god why not allow him to do the fight will you defend him and i tell you the reason why you defend your god because you know that your god is just made of piece of wood and of clay he has nobody to fight on his behalf he cannot fight for himself because he has hands, he cannot handle. He has eyes, he cannot see. They that worship him, they are like him. As they are as dead as the idol himself. That is why you will fight on his behalf. That's why you will contend on his behalf. The Lord said, I should tell you tonight, you that forget God, you should gather yourself together, let him tear you to pieces. For you should return to him, and he will return to you. And he will be a father unto you. He said, let's see the God we serve. Let's go to the book of Isaiah to assist the tale. This God does not need any of us to fight his battle. He is able to stand in the combat. He is able to defend himself. And let's read Isaiah to assist the tale. What does he say? He said, who is it that coming from Edom with a die garment from Bozrah? 
this that speak, that is glorious in his prayer, traveling in the greatness of his strength. That is the God we serve. A God that does not require human beings to fight his battles. A God that does not need his followers to gather up sword around their waist or to bomb buildings and churches just because they want to fight for him. That is the God we serve. We serve a living God. A God that coming from Eden with a dyed garment from Vosra. The God that is glorious in his prayer, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, said the Lord. The God that will not do evil. The God that will not do evil that good may come. Is the God that speak in righteousness. And the God that is mighty to say. Therefore, wherefore art thou great in your prayer? And thy garments like him that shreds the one fact. And I have trodden the one press alone. And of the people there was none with me. For I will shred them in my anger and in the fury of the Almighty God. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will slay, I will stain all my garments. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. The year of my redeem is come. That is the God who can fight for himself. The God that does not require us. The God that does not require us to do his fighting. The God that does not require us to stand in a combat on his behalf. The God that can speak for himself. The God that can design the heart of man. The God that can answer our prayer. He can wake up the dead. He can heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. And when the cripple saw him, they started running. That is the God we serve. He is not a dead God. He is not a piece of wood that needs to be hammered to place. That the people that make it, they take some part of it to set fire. And some part of it, they roast yam and they ate. And then they set up an abomination and they call it a God. That is not the God we serve. It's not the God that needs us to persuade us to go for battle for him so that we can defend his kingdom. He's ready to share our blood so that he can be saved. That is not the God we serve. The God we serve is a God of justice. A God that is able to fight for himself. A God that is able to defend his saints. And God that can do all things. That is the God we serve. And because we are serving that living God today, let the saints sing rejoicing in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their coaches. Let the high praise of the Lord fill their mouths with two edged sword upon their hands to execute vengeance upon the heathen, to bind the kings of the earth with chains and their nobles with fatters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment that God has written. This honor have we the saints. We the saints have this honor to execute judgment. Father, tonight you will execute your judgment. You will save the missionaries in Africa. Father Lord, you show Moses a bush that was born, but he was not convinced. Father Lama Sakura Tahala Sahura Daba, Bende Sakura Tasha Aliba, Beneta Kadavura Tasiara Badu Fatara, Fentere Sakura Yara. Father, tonight, it doesn't matter the persecution your children are going through, they will not be condemned. They will not be condemned. Praise God, Hallelujah. Praise God, Amen. Praise God, Hallelujah. Praise God, Amen. Father Lord, it doesn't matter the suffering your children go through tonight. They will not be consumed. They will not be consumed. Father Lord, my God, the bush might be burning, the affliction might be heavy, but your people will not consume. They will be multiplying in the midst. Father Lord, yes, persecution is high in this end time, but the church of God is growing. Because Lord Jehovah who is in heaven is able to do all things. Dry bone shall rise again. Dry bone, dry bone can rise again. Dry bone shall rise again. Dry bone will begin to rise in our life tonight. Because God is able to do all things, even to make dry bones to begin to rise again. Father Lord, 
the dragon of this missionary will rise again. The dragons of their salvation message will rise again. Father Lord, the God they are guarding against, the God will save their children. Their children will preach the same gospel they are fighting to secure against. Oh Lord, their wife will preach the gospel. Oh Lord, even their most precious high priest will stand in the altar and preach the good news. Father Lord, this I decree in the name of God the Father. This I decree in the name of God the Son. This I decree in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Father Lord, my God, the saints will march on. The saints are marching on and the gate of hell cannot prevail. The gate of evil will not prevail. The gate of persecution will not prevail. The gate of wickedness will not prevail. Father Lord, the saints will march from glory to glory, from victory to victory. Father Lord, as many that comes to you tonight, because the Bible says, if any man come after me, he should deny himself. He should take up his cross and follow me. Father Lord, give us the grace to deny ourselves. Father Lord, I know we as a church have sinned. We have welcomed. We became one with the world. As a result, we know that the world always demand more. And Father Lord, as a result, they keep demanding more for us. And as a result, persecution has bled forth into the church. Father Lord, we have sinned. We have conformed to the standard of the world. We have allowed iniquity to take dominion over your house. And as a result, we are being punished. Persecution has come into the heart. Nobody know how long, O oh Lord, but thou know how long. Thou know all things. Arise therefore, O oh Lord, and defend your house. Defend your church. Defend your children. Father Lord, the children of missionary have been persecuted too. Their wives, their children. Father Lord, we pray for them. We ask, O oh Lord, that your grace should be sufficient for them. We know your grace is made perfect in weakness. Father Lord, when we are weak, you make us stronger. Tonight, we believe your strength that passes human understanding will possess our mortal body. Father Lord, take all the glory. Take dominion, Father. You say in 63 verse 6, And I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring their strength to the earth. And I will measure the loving kindness of the Lord and the praise of the Lord according to all that the Lord God has bestowed on us and the great goodness towards the house of Israel, which he has bestowed on them according to his mercy and according to the multitude of his tender loving kindness. The Lord is the God of strength. Equity and justice belongs to him. He is the all-powerful, and he is the Lord, the all-merciful. And when he comes, who can be able to stand in his way? When he decides to wage war, who is able to defeat him? The people of Canaan, they learn in a bitter way. Sodom and Gomorrah, they learn in a bitter lesson. Because his wrath is quickly kindled, but he leads you. Therefore, O ye king of the earth, set the Lord with fear. With humility, kiss his son, lest he be angry, or else he perish in his way, when his wrath is quickly kindled. God is able to defend himself. He does not require us. He does not need us to stand and begin to say, we are going to help God to fight. God does not need us to fight for him. If God wanted people, If God wanted people to fight for us, he would have done it himself. Amen. He doesn't require any man's help. He doesn't need the help of a God. He doesn't need the help of his servant. He doesn't even need the help of those who claim to be at ease in the world. God is able to do all things. He is able to make dry bones rise again. He is able to fight for himself. Our God tonight will fight for us. And you know what? We will hold our peace. Oh, you saints of it. Even those who are thinking, why can't we avenge ourselves? Why can't we put ourselves together? Why can't we put ourselves together and commit our ways onto our hands and do things our own way? The Lord is saying to you, that today, 
I can do all things if Christ strengthens me. If God is your strength, nothing in the world will be impossible for you. Nothing in the world will be impossible for you. Father, the hour has come. The hour has come. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. Lord, a lot of people have attended this prayer with sickness. Some has attended it with pains. Some has attended it with sorrow. Father, la de sakaya bahura saba siyana tabaja. The Lord that healeth. The Lord that healeth. Send your word tonight. Send your word into their home. Send your word into their feed. Send your word into their churches. Heal them from their disease. Heal them from their disease. Let every sick be healed tonight. Let those who are in bondage be set free. Oh Lord, even those who are listening to the side of my voice, who doctors say to them that their sickness is incurable, their disease has no solution. Thus says the Lord tonight. The doctor may not have solution. The hospital may be helpless in your case, but I have solution. I have solution, says the Lord. I have solution, says the Lord. There is healing for the sick. There is healing for the sick. The Lord said I should tell you there is healing for the sick. There is healing for the sick. The Lord is sending his word into your life tonight. And he's bringing healing to that situation. He's bringing healing to that situation. He's bringing healing to that situation. Oh, that problem is being rolled away right now. The Lord is rolling it away. He's rolling it away. He's rolling that problem. Oh, you have been complaining. Souls are not coming. Every day I go out, I preach the gospel, nobody comes to the church. The Lord says, God is not unfaithful to forget the labor of love which you have shown to his name. God is faithful. God is faithful. He remember your labor. He remember your labor. I remember when I was in similar situation, he said to me, preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. The Lord says, I should tell you just one thing. Stand on the word of God because the word of God is power. Stand on the word of God and the word of God is power. Receive the power that comes with the word. Be instant in season and out of season. The Lord said when you lift him on high, he will draw nation to himself. He will draw all men to himself. He said the last day, the mountain of the Lord's house will be high and lifted up. All nations will flow to it. All nations of the earth will flow to it. And Jesus said, when I ascend on high, I will lead captivity captive in my train. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Are you going through pain and affliction? The Lord said tonight, just begin to lift his name high. Just begin to exalt the name of Jesus. Just begin to exalt the name of Jesus. And if you do that, the Lord said, captivity will be led captive. Captivity will be led captive. Those that put you into captivity, they themselves will go into captivity. The Lord will begin to free you tonight. The Lord will begin to free you tonight. The Lord says, I should tell you, that even though you are a captive, you are under ancestral ties, that I should tell you that thus says the Lord God of all. It was written of old that our parents ate their right bread, and the mouth of their children was made sour. But thus says the Lord, not anymore. Not anymore. He said, I should tell you, that it is he that eats your right brain. It is his own mouth that shall be made sour. It is his own mouth that shall be made sour. Not anymore. The devil has no more claim over your life. He has no more claim over your life. Oh, you that is saying right now, my great grandfather died of heart attack. My mother died of heart attack. Me and now, the doctor say I have heart attack. That means my own is over. Thus says the Lord God of hosts. Not anymore. Not anymore. The children will no more inherit the sins of their father. They will no more inherit the sins of their father. A sinner be 120 years shall die for his own sin. Shall die for his own sin. Even if the fault were your own. Even if you are a lawful captive tonight. You are suffering as a result of your sin. You put hand on dangerous drugs. And so other things. That to the extent you are at the point of death. The Lord said there is still hope. He said behold. Can the lawful captive be delivered? Can the prey be taken from the hands of the terrible? The Lord says, even the lawful captive will be delivered tonight. The prey will be taken from the hands of the terrible one. The Lord will contend on your behalf. 
He will give the flesh eater their own flesh to eat, and the blood drinker will drink their blood as to his sweet wine. The Lord will save your children. The Lord will save your children. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavenly laden. Tonight there is rest. I can guarantee you tonight, 100% there is rest. There is rest for God people. There is rest for God people. If you can only come, if you dare to believe there is help, 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 remember what the Bible says. He that come to God must believe that God is God and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you believe? Do you dare to believe in God? Have you come to God? Have you come to assert his salvation? God says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Let's read the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2. He said, And you had it quickly, who were dead in trespasses and sin. Where in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that is now at work in the children of disobedience. In the time past of your life, you have walked according to the beggarly element, according to the spirit of the power of the prince of the air, the spirit that is not working in the children of disobedience. The prince of the air is the reason why you are confused, is the reason why you are in pain, is the reason why you are sick right now, is the reason why your ministry just refused to grow despite all your labor is the reason why you labor for much and you ate a little is the reason why you earn wages and you put it into a bag with hole is is the reason why all people that are least qualified they get job but you refuse to get and that is because the power of the prince of the air who is at work in the children of disobedience is at work in your life and the lord says the thief he is he come not but to steal to kill and to destroy. The Lord said tonight, I should tell you there is life. There is life. Christ has come that he can give you that life. He can bring life into that dead situation in your life. He can bring life into anything that is dead in your life. What the enemy has killed, there is hope. There is hope. The highest power and authority of the devil is to kill. Is to kill. That is his highest authority. He cannot do. After he has killed the body, there is nothing more he can do. Do not fear him. Do not fear him. He has the power to kill. That is his highest authority. Beyond that, there is nothing he can do. But the Lord says, you should fear God. Because after he kills, he still has the power to cast the soul into utter destruction. And that is the God that has come to man. And he is able to wake up what the devil has killed. He is able to give life to dead situations. The Lord said, I have come to bring life into it. I know the job of a thief. The job of a thief is that wherever he pass, there is something stolen. There is destruction. There is death along the road. But the Lord has come to give life. To give life and to give it in abundance. And that life tonight is coming. That life tonight is coming. That life tonight is here. That life tonight is in the ministry. That life tonight is in his world. Tonight, if you can believe, if you dare to believe, there is hope for the hopeless. There is vision for the visionless. There is power for the powerless. Ah, oh, even to the hopeless, there is hope. The Lord said tonight, if you can dare to believe. In the time past of your life, the Bible says in time past, you were not a people. You were lame from the commonwealth of Israel. You were called uncircumcised by the so-called circumcision that was made by human flesh. But the Lord says to now, you are his people. Tonight you have obtained mercy. Tonight is your day of salvation. Tonight is your day of victory. It's the day that the Lord himself has planned for you to give you glory in the earth, to exalt you above all your enemies. Oh, you sons of God, rejoice in the camp of your enemy. Celebrate. Make bold your banner. And the Lord said, according to whom you will have our conversation in time past, in the loss of our flesh, in the fulfillment of the desire of the flesh and of the mind. We are by nature the children of wrath, even as all that we are. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, we are with, he loves us. 
And when we were dead to sin, when we were dead to sin, He quickened us together with Christ and grace. He has raised us up together and made us together into a heavenly place in Christ Jesus. In the ages to come, God is promising us. If He knew that we are going to die in this generation, why would He promise us something in the ages to come? Because death is only a transformation. The Lord promised us that if God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, He is able to raise us up. And that is why He's telling us in the ages to come that we might show forth. In the ages to come, we might show His exceeding riches of his grace in the kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. No. In the ages to come, God wants to show us yeah. something. God wants to show us something yeah. in the ages to come. God is God. There is no searching of his understanding. His ways are past finding out. Tonight is the acceptable time. Tonight is the day of salvation. If you come to him tonight, having not your heart as the days of provocation, when your father had in their heart in the wilderness, and the Bible said it was not, it went ill with that generation because of their sin. Because of their sin. Tonight, if you have come unto his word, harden not your heart. Come to the Lord with a clean heart. The Lord is speaking to the sick. He said, Be healed. The Lord is speaking to the deaf. He said, Hear what I have to say. The Lord is saying to the blind, let your eyes be open. The Lord is saying to the oppressed, receive the spirit of joy. The Lord is saying to those who are jobless, receive new job from tomorrow. The Lord is saying to those who are in captivity, be free. The Lord is saying to those in prison, I am your friend. I will comfort you. I will not fail you. For I was once in prison like you. The Lord is saying to those who are widows, I am your husband. The Lord is saying to the married, Behold, I am the peace in your home. The Lord is saying unto those who are looking for a life partner right now, Behold, I am the bridegroom. The Lord is saying to you, That is lost, I will find you. The Lord is with you always. He will never fail you nor forsake you. Oh, you saints of God, rejoice in the Lord. Make boast in his name. Serve the Lord with joy. Be comforted because the Lord is in the midst of you. The Lord is in the midst of you. Oh Lord my God. Moses said, suffer us not to live here if your presence will not come with us. Lord, we are preparing also to go for our final mission conference to visit all the zones in the mission. Father Lord, we ask, oh Lord, suffer us not to depart from this house. If your presence will not come with us. Let your presence, because it's your presence that distinguishes us from other people. It's your presence that makes us know that we are not ordinary people. It's your presence that makes us understand that we are called by our God. And the people will notice that we are the children of God and they be afraid of us. It is your presence that makes the difference. Lord, tonight, envelop us with your presence. Envelop us with your knowledge. Envelop us with your power. Envelop us with your glory. Envelop us with your fear that in everything your name alone will take preeminence. Father Lord, unto the Lord be thy glory. Great things he has done. Unto the Lord be thy glory. Great things he has done, great things he has taught us, greater things he would do unto the Lord, be thy glory, great things he has done. Lord, great things you have taught us tonight, and greater things you will do tomorrow. Father Lord, from today, this church will begin to do greater things. Father Lord, there are sins I decree forgiven. Their iniquity I decree pardoned. Father Lord, as many that still sat in the shadow of death, be, they are lot all manner of meat. Father Lord, I said tonight, their sins are forgiven. Their iniquity are pardoned. Father, as many that will come to you tonight, I say their sins are forgiven. Father Lord, as many that sit in darkness, I say let a great light from God shine. 
Let the great light from God shine. Let the great light from God shine. As many that sat in the valley of the shadow of death, I say there is hope. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captive. Oh, you captive of the daughter of God, you captive sons of God, receive freedom. Receive freedom. Receive freedom in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father Lord, I thank you because it is done. You who has lost hope in the mission of faith, I say be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be strengthened. I strengthen you. What I have received of the Lord, I give I unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that died and rose again on the third day, be strengthened. Receive strength to stand in the middle of weakness. Receive strength to stand in the middle of weakness. I give glory unto the Lord. Because he is the God of your heart. There is nothing behind him. And there is nothing before him. For in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Brethren, this is where we end up tonight. Tarry night. If you are in the mission feed, you should continue this night till tomorrow morning. It's an opportunity for you to pray for yourself, to pray for your family, to pray for your feed. And to pray for the house of God, that the saints who are in the earth, they may flourish no. and may serve the God with open hearts. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brethren, no. my name is Missionary Collins. You can send us your prayer request by clicking on our website below or read our mission magazine. You can also call me by collecting phone number from our website and reach me at any point send us your prayer request we will pray for you in line with other missionaries god bless you as you participate in this teaching god bless you in jesus name amen this is where we end our teaching for tonight god bless you as you participate